Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Emily DeRosa. I am a recruiting specialist in the grad admissions office here in College of Engineering at Northeastern. And this is the Wonder Week webinar that focuses on our electrical and computer engineering programs. Uh, so again, thanks so much for joining. Um, I'm going to get started in just a minute by sharing my screen. I will cover some admissions related slides on the front and back end of this presentation. Um, and then in the middle, we will have uh, the bulk of the presentation by Professor uh, Masood Salehi to go over um, our electrical and computer engineering programs. Um, we're also joined by our student ambassador, Brandon Dominique. Thanks so much, Brandon, uh, for popping in today. Uh, so at, more towards the end of the presentation, uh, we will have some ambassador related slides where we'll hand it over to our current student to share a little bit about that as well. Um, we do have the Q&A function enabled in this webinar, so if at any time during the presentation you have questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A function. Um, if we don't get to your question right away, we'll save it for the end for our Q&A session. Um, we'll save the more department and program specific questions uh, till the end, so hang tight in there. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll get started. Give this one second to load. There we go. All right. So thanks again for joining our session focused on electrical and computer engineering. I will go ahead and get started. Um, we start each webinar by covering this slide. This is our code of conduct that's expected of participants during our webinars. You can take a moment just to review this slide. Uh, we ask for a respectful environment during these webinars. Um, pretty standard things. Uh, please stay respectful in the Q&A. And uh, we seek to provide a supportive environment during this webinar uh, to share more about this department. I'll get started with a couple facts on Northeastern as a whole. Uh, we are ranked top 44 R1 Research and Experiential Learning University. We are ranked number one in co-op and internships, which we're very proud of here at Northeastern. And I'll dive a little bit uh, in more detail about what that means in just a few slides. Uh, the college or the university is made up of nine colleges and schools, of course, today focusing on our College of Engineering, more specifically Graduate School of Engineering. Um, we have over 40,000 students, degrees all the way to up to the doctorate level, $230 million in external research awards. Um, and we are a global campus system, but are based here in Boston, Massachusetts. A little bit more uh, visual of our global campus network here. You can see, of course, we are based in Boston. That's where our main campus is. But we do have campuses throughout the United States, as well as a few abroad. Our newest camp campus being in Miami, Florida. Each one of our campuses focuses on education, research, and experiential learning. little bit of a breakdown here of the College of Engineering. Um, currently enrolled as of fall 2022, just over 10,000 students. Uh, that's about 6,260 graduate students and 3,760 undergraduate students. So you can see here in the graduate engineering uh, department, we make up a bulk of those students within the college. Uh, we have academic programs at the bachelor's, master's, and PhD level, as well as 102 academic degree certificates and minors. Um, you can see here a breakdown of just how many faculty we have, um, as well as a little bit more about research, uh, specifically in the College of Engineering. We have um, over 92 million external research awards. Um, we have uh, our master's programs are up to 109% uh, between the years of 2016 and 2022, and we are ranked the top 33 engineering graduate school here in the U.S. This visual here represents uh, the departments that make up the Graduate School of Engineering. Um, you could see our disciplinary departments, that's uh, bioengineering, chemical engineering, 
um, industrial and mechanical, civil and environmental, and electrical and computer engineering. We also have a multidisciplinary graduate education department, which makes up more of the IT areas of engineering um, that kind of spans across many different departments. A little bit more about our accomplished faculty here at Northeastern, just some uh, fun facts uh, showing you just how many of our faculty have been awarded Young Investigator Awards, um, NSF Career Awards, Professional Society Fellowships, and NAE members. And again, a bit more of a breakdown of all of those programs offered in the College of Engineering, um, nine PhD programs, 32 master's programs, all of the graduate certificates that we offer. And then on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see a breakdown um, of the global campus that I mentioned and which engineering programs are offered on each of those global campuses. And of course, all programs are offered here in Boston at the main campus. This slide shows a visual of some of our outstanding facilities, um, brand new state of the art facilities that we're building here on our Boston campus. On the left hand side, you can see one of our newer buildings called the ISEC building. Um, again, lots of labs here, state of the art facilities, and we do continue to expand on our Boston campus. A little bit more on the research side, as I mentioned earlier, we are an R1 research institution with over $92.5 million in external awards. Um, we also do have 18 multidisciplinary research centers and institutes. And uh, research really does kind of drive what we do here at Northeastern. It's something that we're very proud of as an institution and specifically within the College of Engineering, something that our students are really driving forward, um, very interested in and continuing to grow. This here is a breakdown of those 18 research centers and institutes that I mentioned. And this slide outlines our COE mission. As an academic institution, our main product is people. Our success is based on the quantity and quality of the people we produce. We produce transformative engineers, both students and faculty, with a global impact. Um, and I think that's evident by uh, just those few slides I showed earlier, our global campus network, what's going on here in our Boston campus um, really kind of relates back to the COE mission and Northeastern mission as a whole. All right, and before we dive into our department specific slides, I will give a brief overview on co-op. I mentioned earlier, we are ranked number one in co-op in the US. Um, our students can gain real world experience as part of their academic curriculum here at Northeastern. Um, they can participate in this in the undergraduate and graduate level. Uh, this here is a breakdown of just how many students choose to participate in co-op and the success rates and some of the companies on the right hand side that our students participate in those co-ops with. Uh, what characteristics define a co-op? Um, the job function of these co-ops are aligning with your major and what you're interested in, what you hope to be doing in the workforce after graduation. Um, these are full-time experiences that can span either four, six, or eight months in length based on the nature of the co-op, the company that it's with, um, the flexibility of the industry. Uh, these experiences are also paid, so that is definitely a huge benefit. And these are recorded on your transcript as well. Uh, the benefits of a co-op education, um, you're advancing your skill set and exploring your interests, making sure this truly is what you want to be doing when you graduate from your graduate program. Um, you're learning firsthand in the field of your choice and developing valuable job and uh, interviewing skills, uh, connecting, applying classroom theory to what you're doing in your co-op and making connections to build your professional network. Um, salary range is between 18 and $41 per hour. And for our international students, you can utilize CPT in the US or participate in a global co-op. This is just a bit of a visual that kind of describes the timeline based on the length of the co-op. Students are eligible to apply for co-op after uh, completing 16 credits and 
This is not something that's guaranteed, but something that we highly encourage. And you would take a co-op course in order to qualify to be able to participate in a co-op. And if you do choose to participate in a co-op, you would be assigned a specific co-op coordinator or co-op advisor. Um, this person would support you through everything from the search, uh, applying to deciding which co-op is right for you. Um, and you know, during that time when you're participating in it, they're a specific point person uh, to answer all your questions aside from your academic advisor. All right, so with that, I will pause on the admission side. I will go ahead and pass it over to uh, Professor Masood Salehi to go ahead and begin the presentation on our electrical and computer engineering programs. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you, Emily. Uh, hello, everyone. I am, uh, let me introduce myself first. I am Professor Salehi. I'm Associate Chair for Graduate Programs in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Uh, so as, as the associate chair, my uh, main task and job is to make sure that we have a good graduate program, both at MS and PhD level, and also make sure that our students, our graduate students, enjoy their time at uh, our department when they are here during their studies. So can I have the next slide, please? Uh, well, I think Emily has already explained what is the structure of uh, the College of Engineering, as you see, there are some departments that combine the College of Engineering and also an MGen program, multidisciplinary graduate program. Uh, the departments are electrical and computer engineering, our departments, civil and en environmental, uh, chemical, mechanical and industrial. And uh, the most recent addition to our uh, college, bioengineering program. In addition to these programs that offer MS and PhD degrees, we have also an MGen multidisciplinary uh, MS program that is directly run by the college and uh, offers an MS program. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, let me introduce what we have in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. We have uh, three graduate programs. One is MS in Electrical and Computer Engineering. And this can be pursued in two tracks, MS course only and MS with thesis. PhD in electrical and computer engineering that can be uh, pursued in BS entry and advanced entry. BS entry means that the students enter the program right after getting their BS degree and advanced entry are for those students who enter the program having an MS degree already. Also, PhD in computer engineering, uh, again, BS entry and PhD uh, with uh, advanced entry into the program. We have also some joint programs with other departments. We have an MS degree uh, with Department of, uh, with College of uh, Computer Science, Curie College of Computer Sciences, MS in uh, Data Science, MSDS. We have uh, another uh, program, MS in Robotics, which is joint with uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering and Curie College of Computer Sciences. We have an MS uh, in Internet of Things and another MS in uh, Wireless Network Engineering. Uh, these are joint with uh, WIAT, uh, the Wireless Internet of Things uh, Institute. Uh, we have also an MS with applied, uh, MS in Applied uh, Physics and Engineering, which is uh, joint with Department of Physics. Uh, we have also two leadership program, MSECEL and MSECE plus leadership certificate. These are joint with Gordon Center for Leadership. Uh, we have, uh, as uh, I think Emily has already explained to you, we have different campuses across the world. And uh, these are uh, global campuses that we have. Currently, we offer degrees in electrical and computer engineering in, in Boston, of course as well as uh, two more campuses. One is Seattle and the other one is Portland, Maine. Uh, the modality of our programs is that all programs can be pursued as full-time or part-time students. Of course, for international students that I think majority of you are, it, it can be only full-time. Our courses, almost all of them, I would say all of them are four semester hours. And four semester hours means 14 weeks and each week, 200 minutes of lecture. Usually it is in two sessions, two 100 uh, minute lectures. 
And typical for course load for uh, our full time students is eight semester hours and for part time students is four semester hours. Our international students can can only be full time and therefore the minimum course requirement in each semester for them is two courses, uh, which is eight semester hours. So students on F1 visa must be registered full time. Can I have the next one, please? OK, this is a more pictorial present uh, presentation of what our department is and the different degrees in our uh, department. As you see, we have PhD in electrical and computer engineering on top. This usually takes four to five years to complete, depending on whether you enter the program with a BS degree or with an MS degree. And of course, the length of your research, you know, for PhD, it is very difficult to set a time for completing that. That uh, depends a lot on uh, the speed of progress in your uh, dissertation. PhD in computer engineering, again, the same with the same time duration. And then MS in electrical and computer engineering, which has two tracks, course only and thesis track, usually takes one and a half to two years to complete. And it depends on, of course, the, uh, whether you apply for a co-op or you don't take co-op. Next one, please. Uh, so uh, a little bit about our graduate program. Our graduate program is very intensively research oriented and we have a lot of scholarly activities in our department. We have over $50 million in annual research funding and I will show you what uh, percentage of the college uh, that means uh, in the next slide. Uh, we, have, uh, about, we, we have about 45 PhD and 120 MS students graduating each year. Currently, we have about 320 PhD students and 400 MS students in the program. Uh, we have 76 full-time faculty, uh, 25 affiliated and adjunct faculty. This means the faculty who are uh, mainly in another department, but working with our department as well. We have 11 teaching and 11 research professors in our department who are, as, as the name suggests, they are basically involved in either teaching or, or research. The full-time faculty, of course, are uh, uh, engaged in both teaching and, and research. Uh, we are expanding our uh, departments. You know, right now it is 76 full-time. I think next year it will be something about, I think, 80 or maybe a little bit over 80. Uh, therefore, research infrastructure in our department is, is increasing each year. And uh, our funding also increases. The number of graduate students that we take also increases. And we are an expanding department. And what we need for that is good students who help us with our research, with our presentations, with our publications. And we appreciate this type of skills in the students that uh, come to particularly to our PhD. Next slide, please. OK, to show you where we stand in terms of research funding in the College of Engineering, please look at this uh, pie chart on the left. Uh, the big part of this pie chart, this purple part, is Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. As you see, 62% of the total research expenditure in the College of Engineering comes from our department, and then after us, mechanical engineering and civil engineering, et cetera, other departments. Therefore, you see the amount of research in the department and how much emphasis we put on that. Uh, just to tell you something more, the research expenditure and budget of our department is more than uh, each of the other eight colleges in the university. So as, as a department only, as a department, we, are, we uh, have, have more research funding than any other college in, uh, in the university. Uh, next slide, please. OK, uh, we have also research centers. Uh, I think Emily had already noted that and introduced some of the research centers. In the Department of Electrical Engineering, we have the following research centers. Uh, the uh, oldest one is the Bernard uh, Gordon Center for Subsurface Sensing and Imaging. This is funded by the National Science Foundation. And this is one of the engineering research centers at, across the country. These are very few centers. Center for Awareness and Localization of Explosive Related Threats, ALERT, funded by the Department of Homeland Security. A Center for High Rate Nano Manufacturing, this is shared by the Department of, uh, with the Department of Mechanical Engineering. 
Center for Ultra Wide Area Resilient Electrical Energy Transmission Networks, current. Uh, this is again an NSF funded uh, center, uh, which is among, uh, I think, four or five universities, and it's basically centered in uh, Northeastern. Center for Integrative Biomedical uh, Computing, mainly focusing on uh, uh, brain computer interface. Center for Translational Applications of Nanoscale Multiferroic Systems. Institute of Information Assurance. This is joint with Hoori College of Computer Sciences and focused on security uh, issues of computer networks and other uh, venues. Uh, Institute for Experiential Robotics, uh, the name suggests, and the newest addition to our centers, Northeastern Institute of Wireless Internet of Things. And this is a well-funded center and uh, is current, has a lot of uh, good faculty, a lot of research active facu uh, faculty in it. Next one, please. Well, this next one basically, and also the next one after this one, um, give you some information about the centers. I won't go uh, through this. You know, you see, uh, you know, uh, slides that show what is done in each center with some brief introduction to the activities going on in, in that center. Next one, please. Again, the same thing, introducing some of our centers, current and uh, other centers here, you see the activities, uh, short brief explanation of what activities are going in those centers. Next one, please. Now, uh, a little bit about uh, concentrations. Uh, this is just for MS uh, students uh, that uh, I'm focusing on. Uh, we have eight concentrations in our department. Uh, these are communication control signal processing, computer networks and security, computer systems and software, computer vision, machine learning, and algorithms, very popular uh, area concentration, electromagnetics, plasma, and optics, hardware and software for machine intelligence, microsystems, materials and devices, and power systems, power electronics, and motion control. Uh, these eight centers, uh, these eight concentrations are offered to our students, and when a student applies to our MS program, specifies which concentration the student is interested in. Next one, please. Okay, so what are the requirements for completing an MS program? And as I told you, there are two tracks for MS, MS course only and MS with thesis. For MS uh, course only, MSc as we call it, uh, you have to complete eight graduate level courses, which is 32 semester hours because all our courses are four semester hours each. And there are certain conditions that these courses must satisfy. At least five courses must be what we call depth courses, must be in your concentration, exactly in your concentration that we have selected. At least two course must be outside this concentration, and the eight course can be inside or outside concentration. Uh, therefore, these are called breadth courses, courses that you take outside your concentration. Therefore, we have either a student taking six depth and two breadth, or five depth and three breadth courses to graduate, the total of eight. Uh, our students can take courses outside the department as well uh, for communication control signal processing, electromagnetics, uh, MSMD, microsystem material and devices, and power concentrations. Uh, the maximum number of courses that they can take out of department is two. Uh, for other four concentrations, which are basically computer-based uh, concentrations, they can take at most three courses outside the department. And the reason for that is that these students take many courses from uh, Curry College of Computer Sciences. Next one, please. Okay, uh, for uh, PhD course requirements, advanced entry, uh, there are, uh, as I have already told you, there is advanced entry and there is a BS entry. Uh, in our program, advanced entry students have already an MS degree. For these students, uh, the course requirement is four courses, four graduate level courses, 16 semester hours, and at least two of these courses must be in electrical and computer engineering. Of course, the big part of PhD program is your dissertation, the research that you're doing. And uh, well, you know, that, that takes most of your time here, the four to five years that I mentioned before. Uh, 
although the requirement is for graduate courses, because our PhD students are, are here for four or five years, majority of them take many more than four graduate courses because there are a lot of intrinsic courses are offered in the department and the students are willing or interested in taking those courses. So although the minimum is four, a typical student uh, takes about six uh, or more courses to uh, graduate. Uh, next one, please. Oh, I didn't tell you about one thing. You know, I told you about MS course only. MS with thesis is pretty much like MS course only. 32 semester hours are required, but from these 32 semester hours, eight semester hours are thesis. Therefore, eight semester hour uh, of thesis and 24 semester hours of coursework, which is they take six courses plus a thesis uh, to complete. Thesis usually takes two semesters to complete, sometimes more than two semesters, but majority of thesis are done in, uh, in two semesters. Uh, a little bit about uh, what are students, uh, what, what type of job are students get after graduation? Uh, there's a number of students that are interested in uh, academic positions. They want to do research, and we have students who are already professors in other universities. The, some of our students are more interested in doing research only. They are attracted to research centers, both national and local research centers or industry-related uh, research centers. And a uh, good many of our students are attracted to industry in different areas of industry, power industry, electronics industry, communication industry, and, uh, and related fields. Uh, next one, please. Okay, I think uh, Emily has already told you about co-op and internship in the department. We offer two types of uh, working outside the department. One is co-op. Co-op is available to all graduate students whether they are PhD or they are MS students. Uh, for PhD students, there is, of course, co-op available, but in addition to co-op, there's also internship available. The main difference between co-op and internship is that co-op has some restrictions. You know, you have to have a GPA of 3.25. You have to take the introduction to co-op course. Uh, but for internship, and in addition to that, the length of co-op is either four or six, or eight months. So you have to select one of these uh, durations to do co-op. Internship doesn't have that limit. Internship can be for two weeks to, I think, a maximum of eight months, any time here. And internship must be related directly to the research of the PhD students. Uh, for example, there is a PhD student who is doing research in our department, but at the same time, uh, the student needs some data, collection of some data, which is not available in the department. Therefore, the student can go to industry or to, for example, a hospital to collect the data that is needed for the research. Also, in cases of experimental uh, peer research that the student is doing, there, must, there could be cases where the facilities are not uh, at, at the university level. They go to uh, industry to uh, have access to those facilities for doing their research. And PhD students can participate in both co-op and internship. So the main difference between co-op and internship is that for co-op, certain uh, preconditions are, are needed for internship. It's not needed, but internship has to be part and parcel of their research program. Uh, the professor and the chair of department have to approve that. And duration of PhD can be anything. Uh, it's not tied to the duration of semesters, whereas co-op is synchronized with our semester system. Next slide, please. Okay, so that's a question that I usually hear. What are uh, the characteristics of a success, successful uh, application for admission? So there are certain factors here. You know, um, we used to have GRE, uh, as, as one of the conditions, it is currently waived. So at this point, we don't need GRE scores for uh, admission. Uh, but TOEFL and IELTS and Duolingo, these are uh, English proficiency tests are required for, for, uh, uh, for all students, all graduate students who apply to, to our program, unless they are from an English speaking country. An English speaking country means um, Canada, uh, you know, uh, United Kingdom and New Zealand, Australia, 
countries like that where the language of the country is English. Uh, in particular, I, I'm usually asked this question, India and Pakistan do not, uh, uh, are not among these countries. So for, for these students, uh, TOEFL or IELTS or Duolingo is required. And to give you a perspective of how, what, what grades are required for TOEFL, I think it is 95, for uh, IELTS it's 7, and for uh, Duolingo it's 115, I believe. Uh, we also require letters of recommendation. Uh, of course, strong letters would serve you better. And we prefer letters of recommendation that come from your professors. So academic letters of rec uh, recommendation are preferred, although we accept also uh, letters of recommendation that come from uh, the professional side. Uh, so, you know, someone with whom you have worked in industry, uh, you know, of course, that type of letters are also, uh, also received and acceptable. Uh, one major factor in reputation of the university in which you took your BS degree, reputation uh, of uh, the program, uh, not just the university, the program, electrical engineering program that you're coming from, that also is, is important. And the GPA uh, is, is a very determining factor in uh, overall GPA and also your GPA in uh, related courses that uh, relate to your concentration. You know, different courses uh, relate to concentrations differently. You know, for example, if you are in computer engineering, uh, for example, computer systems and software, obviously computer related courses are more important. If you're in communication control signal processing, mathematical oriented courses are more important. If you are in uh, electromagnetics or electronics, microsystem materials and devices, uh, physics related, design related, uh, you know, electronics related courses become more important. And particularly for our PhD admission, research activity in the background is a big plus. You know, for example, if you have publications, if you have presented uh, research results in conferences, these are a big plus, and uh, usually our professors go uh, in that direction to accept students. A little bit also about the admission process, I want to tell you. If you are applying for PhD program, our PhD admission is only based on funding and recommendation of our faculty. Therefore, uh, PhD admission is not centralized by a committee. PhD students are selected by the faculty who wants to support them. Therefore, if you have applied to the PhD program, uh, it's not quite certain at what time you will receive your admission because faculty are continuously uh, reviewing the applicants and if they have funding, they select the applicants. And the funding is not a set time because our faculty are receiving funding all the time in the duration of review and sometimes an opening gets uh, available and an offer goes out. <coughs> Excuse me. So for PhD program, it is the input of the faculty, individual faculty who select the students. For MS program, it is the Graduate Affairs Committee that reviews the uh, files and makes a decision. And it is done continuously. It is an ongoing process. If you haven't received admission yet, don't get disappointed. We have more than 2,000 applicants and we have to review them. That's a daunting job. And uh, if we want to do it well, if we want to go through the applications carefully and make the right decisions, it, it takes some time. Some of you might have already received that. If you have applied to the program, some of you might already have received admission and uh, others are, are waiting. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, a little bit about financial aid. Uh, financial aid, majority of financial aid goes to PhD students. There are different uh, types of uh, support available to PhD students. Uh, the main support for PhD students is fellowship or ECE fellows. These students receive 15 semesters of support, five years full, you know, three semesters per, per year, uh, fall, spring, and summer. 
uh, and that's completely sufficient for completing their, their uh, studies at Northeastern. Uh, this includes tuition as well as a stipend uh, that they receive you know, for, for their expenses. And uh, uh, of course, the continuation of this fellowship depends on their research progress. Uh, they also receive uh, teaching assistantship, uh, which is available only for students uh, in, in their second year. It's not available in first year. We want students to know about the structure of the courses first and then be able to help us with our courses. And usually it is uh, to cover between two research assistantships. When a student receives a fellowship, this is for uh, four semesters. It doesn't mean that all the time the student will be covered by research assistantship. Sometimes the student has to be covered by teaching assistantship, and uh, we provide that experience also to our students. Uh, for MS students, uh, we are not offering research assistantship or teaching assistantship. Those go to PhD students only. But for MS students, uh, well, occasionally some research assistantship is, is available, but this is very occasionally, very rare cases where a faculty member sees something in one MS student and introduces that for research, that student for research assistantship. It is only decided by faculty, not by the admission committee, and happens very, very rarely. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we have also hourly appointed uh, positions. Uh, these are course assistantships and graders and helping with the labs. Uh, these are hourly paid uh, to the students, uh, and uh, these do not cover the tuition like fellowship or research assistantship or teaching assistantship. Uh, so these are the type of uh, positions that are available in college. Uh, hourly appointments are only for MS students, and the other uh, type of uh, Assistantships are available for PhD students, as, as you know. Next slide, please. Okay, a little bit about Boston. Uh, Boston is one of the uh, main centers of culture and, and education in the United States. Uh, it is the 11th uh, uh, metropolitan city in the United States in terms of population and largeness. Uh, a lot of it has the third largest concentration of engineers in in the country after Bay Area and uh, I think Houston in Texas. Uh, it has been forerunner and pioneer in in many areas. Boston was the first uh, city in the United States that had the subway system, for example. And uh, the economy of Greater Boston is, is very large. It is comparable to Norway. And remember that Norway has a lot of uh, oil. Uh, there are a lot of colleges and universities well known in the Boston area. Uh, about 375,000 college students in the Boston area and vicinity. Uh, there are major universities that you're well aware of, Harvard and MIT in, in Cambridge, right across the uh, river from, from Boston. There are, uh, you know, of course, Northeastern, you know, Tufts University, Boston University, Brandeis, etc. Many colleges as well. Uh, it is a very rich and cultural center. If you come out of the Department of uh, from uh, Northeastern campus to the right of you, is the Boston Symphony, and to the left of you is uh, uh, Museum of Fine Arts, one of the biggest and well-known uh, museums across the country. We have a very diverse uh, environment in, in our university. Uh, there are students from all continents in, in, in the university. Uh, in the electrical engineering uh, department only, we have students from more than 25 countries. Uh, at the NU level, Northeastern level, we have students from 122 countries. And uh, we have a large population of female students, about 30% of the students in College of Engineering are female, and uh, more than that in the Department of Electrical and Computer. Okay, at this point, I, uh, I stop. I thank you again for uh, being here, and I will turn the floor to Emily again. Thank you. Thank you so much for diving into our 
electrical and computer engineering programs and details. Um, like I mentioned, we will have time for Q&A at the end, so I do just want to briefly uh, go through a couple more slides. I do want to highlight our graduate, graduate ambassador program. Like I mentioned, for each department and program, we do have graduate ambassadors who are current students, have been through the process, and are here to assist you with questions that you have. Um, and we are uh, joined today by one of our graduate ambassadors for the ECE department. We have Brandon Dominique on here with us. Um, so I'd love to hand it over to Brandon to tell you uh, just a little bit briefly about himself and uh, his experience thus far with the ECE department and Northeastern. Thanks, Brandon. Brandon, I can see you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. All right, Brandon, maybe we'll circle back to you. Unfortunately, still can't hear you. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> we will try to get that figured out, um, but I'll briefly just uh, hop over to the next slide um, about what our ambassadors can assist you with. Um, of course, you're going to have some admission specific questions to your own file. Um, you can send those directly to us in the admissions department. We're happy to help there, but ambassadors are such amazing resources to help answer department and program specific questions, um, questions about the student experience at Northeastern or even the application process, uh, coursework, what it's like moving to a certain campus, um, different things to take advantage of during your time at Northeastern. Um, this is a great QR code to scan or a great slide to screenshot. These are the different ways that you can interact with our different ambassadors um, and also find YouTube videos recorded of panels where we chat with current students. Um, I think our students are the most valuable resources that we have, and it's a great way to go ahead and engage and get your questions answered from students who are currently in the program, currently living it. Um, I see that Brandon did rejoin. Maybe we can try audio one more time. Oh, unfortunately still can't hear you, Brandon. All right, well, in the interest of time, I will go ahead and move on. Maybe um, I'll go ahead and enable the chat feature so Brandon can tell you a little bit about himself. Um, and you can also reach out to Brandon on our ambassador website through the different platforms. Um, going back to getting involved at Northeastern, there's many ways for students to get involved outside of the classroom, different clubs, organizations, and societies that students can join. This here is just a few. It's a great way to meet students outside of your department, uh, within the College of Engineering, and even outside of the college. And we have many opportunities for support um, in our Graduate School of Engineering for our students. Um, we mentioned those co-op advisors earlier. We have many students joining us from internationally. So we have our Office of Global Support and our Global Student Success Office to assist with the many needs there. Um, we have student services for academic advising, which again is separate from co-op advising. That's more for course registration and questions once you're here on campus. We also have a Department of Career Design and Employer Engagement that hosts things like career fairs, workshops, and career advising appointments to really get you re ready for post-graduation. Um, joining us today, I know we do have some accepted students, uh, so congratulations if you've received your acceptance already. Um, as I've mentioned in the Q&A a couple of times, we're still actively reviewing applications, so if you haven't received a decision yet or you haven't yet applied, uh, there's still time and we are still releasing decisions, so we thank you for your patience during this very, very busy time of the cycle. Um, this here is a roadmap for those students who have received um, acceptance already. Um, this is a great kind of visual to show the next steps in 
uh, you know, getting your way to Boston and starting the program in the fall. This is, again, a great slide to take a screenshot of. Um, of course, we'll be in communication as different deadlines come around regarding things like applying for I-20s, orientation, um, you know, coming to campus to start classes. But this is kind of a great roadmap just to keep these things in mind as time is moving forward quite quickly. Um, for our prospective students, I know we did get this question a couple of times in the Q&A, um, so I'll go ahead and answer this now for everyone. Yes, there is still time to apply. We are still accepting applications. For our international students currently outside of the U.S., that deadline is June 1st. And for any domestic students joining us and international students currently residing in the U.S., that application deadline is August 1st, uh, both of 2023. Um, we already talked about most admissions requirements, but one thing I do want to highlight on this slide uh, for joining today, we do have an application fee waiver code. If you haven't yet applied, this will waive the $75 application fee, and you can copy this down right here. Uh, I will type this in the chat again so you can copy and paste it. Um, we cannot apply these fee waivers retroactively, so this is a fee waiver if you have not yet submitted your application to COE. And again, another great slide uh, to keep with you for future reference. These are just some links. I've mentioned a couple times our admissions email address for the Grad School of Engineering. Um, we have received a couple questions in the Q&A about specific applications. Um, and in order to answer those in a more personalized way to really dive in, um, we will uh, need you to send us an email in order to really dive into your file and answer those personalized questions for you. Um, we have the ambassador email again. Unfortunately, uh, we're having some audio issues with Brandon here, but um, I know he is more than happy to have you contact him after this webinar to ask any questions. And while we do still have a couple minutes left, I want to get to our Q&A. Um, so let me stop sharing my screen. Um, again, I just want to reiterate, if we don't get to your question today, please send us an email um, in the interest of time. Uh, we'll be able to answer just a couple of questions as we have another webinar coming up afterwards. <laughs> so let me go ahead and get started with those. I will pose those questions to Professor Salehi. All right. Um, can an MS thesis student convert to a PhD? Um, if yes, does this help to a faster completion of a PhD? Yes and yes. Uh, yes, MS students can convert to PhD, but in order to convert to PhD, they need again the support of one of our faculty members. In fact, this happens quite often. Our top MS students you know, no faculty, reach out to the faculty and receive funding and support from them and are admitted to our PhD program. Uh, usually this doesn't happen in the first or second semester. This happens after third semester when they have uh, uh, some G good GPA, they have taken courses, they know the faculty better. And of course, you know, when, when they enter the PhD program for them, the PhD program becomes shorter. Uh, because uh, usually when they receive that admission, they start doing research during their MS program, and this helps them with the PhD duration of the PhD. Thank you. Um, this applicant asks, I completed a bachelor's in math, chemistry, and physics, and a master's in computer applications. Am I eligible for applying to the PhD or MS in electrical engineering? So you completed a BS degree in math and, and science, etc., and then you got an MS degree in uh, computer engineering. If if I understand that correctly, yes, the answer is yes, and you can apply to our PhD program. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I see here a question about a program being STEM eligible uh, or STEM designated. Yes, all of the programs in the College of Engineering are STEM designated. Let's see, scrolling through the questions here. Can I request a change in my MS of ECE concentration um, before the program begins? Yes, yes, you can. You have to write to admissions and uh, 
uh, make a request for changing your concentration. Your application will be reviewed again for that concentration. And if admissible, you will change your concentration. And this won't jeopardize your admission to the first concentration. You're still eligible to, uh, to work on your first concentration. But yes, that's possible. Thank you. All right, I see a couple questions here um, about the timeline of receiving a decision specific applications. Um, again, we are still actively reviewing applications and releasing decisions. If you have a question about your own personal application, we're happy to take a deeper look at that by emailing um, our COE grad admissions email address. And again, we thank you for your patience as this is a very busy time in our cycle. And we will get to your questions as soon as possible. All right, scrolling through to find another question here. Um, yes, you are able to defer your acceptance up to two terms, and we can help you with that uh, by emailing admissions once again. All right, is co-op eligible for thesis-based MS students? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. It looks like a lot of the questions here, again, are based on uh, receiving uh, decisions and submitting applications. So um, again, yes, there is still time to apply June 1st for international students outside of the U.S. and August 1st for domestic students and students currently residing in the U.S. I will quickly just type um, our fee waiver code and the email address in the chat function here before we end today's session. Uh, uh, I, I see what, one, one question here that says, is it possible to accept a PhD student with 6.5 overall course in ILETS? And we understand that in some countries, you know, there are difficulties in uh, in getting the exam again. Uh, so uh, yes, that's possible if you have the support of a professor to your PhD program. Uh, that's possible. We can sometimes waive those, uh, and and six point five is close to seven. So yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, Again, thank you all so much for your time today, for your questions. I apologize that we can't get to everyone's questions individually today, um, but please email us uh, coe-gradadmissions at northeastern.edu. If you continue to have uh, program or department specific questions, we will get you to the right people to answer those questions. And again, we're happy to help with those admissions related questions as well. Um, thanks everyone so much for joining today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. This session will be recorded and posted to our YouTube channel. Uh, thank you again, Professor Salehi, for all of your wonderful, valuable information about our ECE programs. Um, thank you, Brandon. I'm so sorry that unfortunately the audio was not cooperating today, but I've let our attendees know that they can contact you through our different ambassador uh, modes. So again, thanks everyone for joining today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, everybody.